And for multi-GPU, you need to guarantee that you have multiple GPUs. So you can run things here. For example, um, I do have two GPUs here. One is pretty slow GPUs is M60. It's like three years or four years ago GPUs, but it's pretty cheap. And I have two GPUs here. Okay. Then we use LLAT uh, just from scratch. We can like lot this part. We define the parameters, we define the LLAT, and do the things. One thing here is that the parameters itself is on CPU. So we need to copy to different, we need to copy the parameters to GPUs. What we do here is that we define a function, get the parameters, given the parameters on CPU, and given a context, which is a GPU, what do we do here? For every parameters here, we're going to copy to this context, get the new parameters, and then attach gradients, because we're going to compute the gradient. So for example, we can show that that's, uh, if we copy to GPU zero, we can show that the first weight is already on GPU zero, and also the bias is on GPU zero. Okay. The second thing is that we need sum over the gradients across different GPUs, and also copy the. Uh, here we copy just copy the gradient back. So what do we do here? The data is just a list of data across different GPUs. We're going to sum all the gradients, uh, sum the values here, and the copy back. So what we do a very simple way to do things. For every data, except for the first one, we just the data i, we copy to the, G, the GPU, the context of uh, the first data. And then adding to data zero. So we sum this data across different devices. And then we just copy back, the sum data copy back to every data i, except for, for the first one. So that's all, the cross different GPUs. For example, here, we create an example here. On GPU zero, it's all one. On GPU one, it's all twos. And then after all reduce, we sum this together, and both GPU zero and one get threes. Okay. The other thing that we show that we need a break down the batch size into multiple parts, um, and then send to different GPUs. So assume data is a data batch. We have contacts, a list of contacts. Um, what do we do here? Assume we have k GPUs, n examples in the data. We're going to assume that the simple case is, can be uh, divided, divisible. That is, every GPU will get m examples here. n in total, k GPUs, every GPU get m. So we're going to double check, it's, like a, it's an easy one. And then for each part, we slice each part and returns as context as the ice GPU and the return it. We're going to return the list of batches and each batch is on each GPU. So here, take an example here. If the input is on CPU, it, it's how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six examples on, the, on CPU. And and we want to load into two GPUs, you can see that the first three lines is breaking into GPU zero, and the, uh, the bottom three lines is copied into GPU one. Okay, that is partition the data set and copy to uh, different GPUs. Okay. So then, here's the key thing, how to implement things in a single made batch because all this parallelization runs on within the batch size, within the batch. So here, X and Y is a batch, and this is a list of GPU parameters, and list of contacts at the learning rate. The first thing we do, given the batch, we can split and load into different GPUs for both X and the Y. So, this is a list of x, a part of x, and the y, so y as, uh, is a list of y's as well. Then within the autograph scope, we're going to run, given the part, so here, here's the thing. We iterate over every GPU, and this is, this is the x for one GPU, y for one GPU, and the parameters on the one GPU. And for each GPU, we run the forward pass, given the net x and the w, and the computer loss. 
can be a loss here. So this is on single GPU. Because we have four loop, we iterate over the uh, multiple GPUs. So the loss here is just a list. If you have four GPUs, you have four losses. Then for each loss, we're gonna run the backward, which means each GPU gonna run the backward in parallel. So when, when the gradient are done, we all reduce the, uh, the gradients. See the gradient here? We just sum the gradient together and then copy the sum gradient back to each GPU. Finally, for each GPU, we just run the SGD there on each GPU. Okay, so we run the things just by sequential, by auto parallelization, the system will run all this in parallel for you. All the data copy computations are gonna run in parallel. Any questions so far? Okay, it's simple? Okay. So the training function's not so different to the others we have. Like here, we create a list of cortex, number of GPUs we have, and then we need to copy the parameters into GP, different GPUs, and then we run four data epochs, and for here, for each, uh, um, every time we read the batch, and run the batch on multiple GPUs, um, here we adding weight all here, just for benchmark purpose, not just for uh, nothing else, um, and then we print something there. Okay, that's all. Um, now we can try some results here. So firstly, we use a single GPU. The batch size is 256 and the neural rate equals 0.2. You can see here, every epoch takes 2.2 seconds. The accuracy is like increase as well. Then we change to GPU, number of GPU equals two. Because we fix the batch size, fix the learning rate, nothing has been changed, only change the number of GPUs, you will get the same, almost the same accuracy as before. So you can first check the accuracy, pretty similar, that because we randomized the initialize all the things, it's a little bit different, but you will not change the accuracy too much. But they, we hope that we can make it faster, uh, but you can see that you didn't make it faster on two GPUs. One GPU is 0 .2, 2, 2 GPU is also 2.3, not too much. The reason is because now we have two GPUs. Only, every GPU only get one uh, 28 batch size every time, which means every minute batch, the workload decreases, which impact the performance and also the we have a little bit of communication overhead, and the neural net is pretty small, we're gonna show ResNet later, and then the communication overhead is a little bit larger than the computation itself, actually not pay too much here. What we can do here, that we guarantee every GPU get the same batch size, which means two GPUs, we double the total batch size to uh, 512. And because we adopt the batch size, we can also de increase the learning rate a little bit. We're gonna explain later maybe why we're gonna increase the learning rate. That's a lot of things there. So you can, at the least, you can see that, well, the time reduced. It's not perfect two times speed up, because the learning is so easy, and but still like get something there. And check the accuracy. Well, actually it's performed to be a, uh, worse compared to before because this batch size or maybe learning rate is not fine-tuned fine because we changed the optimization method. Okay, any questions so far? Question? Uh, if you change the first line with the bigger batch size and the larger learning rate, you also reduce the time for single GPU. That's true. So the question that, well, you can always change to 512. I will not run here. Maybe I can, I can try that. Uh, let me try that if I can run there take a little bit of wire. Um, yes, if you change the large one, you can reduce the time from 0 0.4 to less than two seconds. Then this one's too slow, let me stop it, and well, let me finish it. Then,
I can then, if you can increase the batch size, I can increase the batch size as well. No, let me do that. <laughs> well, you see? Well, the thing is like, none is too small. Usually GPU have limit, limited memory. Uh, for example, if you're gonna train ResNet, the max batch size you can choose is like 32, not too much. Because you need so many memories, um, the GPU memory, the, the training memory is linear to the batch size. So uh, given a single GPU, you have, uh, you have upper bound. It's a multi-GPU, so I can always choose to maybe uh, 256, okay? But again, show that, okay, this large batch size, you can make the convergence much slower. Let's show how to using Gruon, pretty similar. Uh, the only thing different here, we're gonna use ResNet uh, um, ATIM as an example, because no net is too small. You can ignore how to do uh, in ResNet, I think you already got how to do that. And also, like we using two GPUs here. Um, the only thing here, when you initialize the parameters, I can specify a list of GPUs. So Gruon will do automatically for you. So no matter it's just a single context or list of contacts, we're gonna do that. So if we, gonna, if we just initialize on multiple uh, contacts, we're gonna copy the parameters into multiple GPUs. Um, so here, the Gruon have split and load um, function here. We don't need to re-implement that again. So be, remember that we initialize to wait multiple things. Now let's see how it works. So firstly, we didn't initialize on CPUs. If you're gonna get the wait and the call data, you're gonna get the runtime error because it's not initialized on CPU. In default, you're gonna copy the data on CPU. Um, but we can do that, we can, for data, we can pass the context to that to fetch the date, the parameters initialized on particular device. So you can see that pass context zero, we got the data initialized on G GPU, um, on GPU zero, and the weight on data context one, the weight initialized on GPU one. Okay, uh, I mean, for screen. And the training function not different to before. Um, the only thing here, the context, the list of contacts, I initialize, initialize on multiple GPUs. And what else we have here, here we are using the split load function here. And also like for each GPU iterate on multiple GPUs, compute the forward pass, backward pass, a step. Um, so the trainer, when you pass the parameter to a trainer, the trainer see oh, okay, how many devices we have, it's gonna automatically do that for you. You don't need to worry about that. So you don't need to do all this copy and all the things, other things. Okay, so compared to a single device training, what do you do here? Um, here you don't need to do, but if, even for single GPU training, you also need to specify the context. The only thing here, you want to do automatically split the data because we want you to split data because kind of you have two different GPUs, one's faster, one's slower, or you have a CPU and a GPU, you can, for example, you have 100 uh, examples in the batch, you can give the faster GPU 80, 80 examples, the slow one CPU, or maybe a slow GPU, just the 20 examples. You can kind of manually balance the workload, okay? So, well, I didn't run that. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, oh, that's, well, it, uh, it may take a while <laughs> to run this notebook. So what questions so far? <laughs> 